Welcome back to Bodybuilding for Brass Players. I'm Umvi Kaylee G. Scott Jones, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing uh, Dr. James Green. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let him uh, introduce himself in a second. I just want to say that I met this uh, wonderful person uh, through playing. We both were playing with the Nasty Natty Brass Band in Cincinnati, Ohio, or somewhere, and um, and I heard this tuba. Um, you know, when, once he first started playing, I was like, oh, Oh, okay. Um, you know, uh, and that was our first time meeting. And, and to me as a musician, I think often the best way to be introduced is by playing and by hearing someone's sound. So that was the thing that um, first just caught my attention about, you know, as you as a musician, and uh, we've had, you know, some conversations here and there on a gig. And uh, so it's just a pleasure to bring you on to the, um, to the, to the series. So um, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself a bit, say some things about yourself. Alrighty, as he said, my name is James Green. I'm currently the lecturer of um, tuba, euphonium, and bass trombone at Ohio Northern University in Ada, Ohio. I also freelance around Columbus and teaching, and honestly, all throughout Ohio on gigging. Mainly, most of my gigs have been in Cincinnati with um, with a lot of fellow musicians of uh, Dr. Jones, mainly Nasty Natty Brass Band. But I I have had some great experiences just getting getting to play here in Ohio. I'm originally from Cedar Hill, Texas, a little small suburb outside of Dallas. I did my undergraduate at ACU in Abilene, and I did my master's at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. I wanted to get out of Texas for a little while, and then okay. I moved uh, to uh, after all my doctoral auditions in 30,000 miles in the car in six months. I wow. ended up at the Ohio State for my doctorate. Okay. And, and I was, I'm just, I was a stereotypical tuba player. The big, large guy never exercised. I guess the exercise was running to the buffet counter, or running to get some good Texas barbecue when I was there. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to take some notes here and there to come back to as we go. But, um, okay, cool, cool. Um, Let's see here. So um, now how many students, you know, on average, do you have like in your studio or do you teach outside also? Of, of yeah. I do teach outside of uh, ONU. My mm -hmm. numbers fluctuate when this COVID-19 stuff hit. My numbers mm -hmm. drastically drop because a lot of my students like the in-person, the in-contact lessons. They they like their or they like their time slot. So it's just dependent on the number per year what's going on it's i mean i've had i was having to turn away students with my schedule a couple years ago mm -hmm. uh, i was just so full and so it just depends i mean and going with the exercising you know the fuller i get with my studio the harder it gets yeah and and that was cool to see because you know i'm i'm not all about you know how to uh, a person getting stuck in their appearance and everything like that even myself um but it was just inspiring. And I was like, let me go ahead and make sure I definitely get you on the series. Um, in addition to as a tuba, tuba player, but also talking about that. So how does exercise and fitness and just diet and everything, how has that been, you know, uh, how has that played into your life recently? Ed, you want me to go into the, like how it got started or just. Sure. Wherever you want to go. Oh, it was actually, uh, this is something pretty, uh, pretty recent for me. It was Labor Day weekend. I was uh, 2019 my wife and at her mom's house and she was saying saying how we needed to probably get into some diet and exercise mm -hmm. at least some diet losing some weight my wife was finishing her master's she had just finished she's we're like now what so mm -hmm. we're like my my mother-in-law saying i know you walk a lot you know just don't you're on your feet a lot you're not eating well so you can lose some weight my wife ends up finding an iPhone app, and it's available, I think, on all platforms called iTrack Bites. Okay. Free app. It's kind of like the old Weight Watchers where you track points. And, and we decided to kind of just give it a couple weeks just to kind of see what we were normally doing, where we were normally eating. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've typed in my weight, get a scale, type in the weight into the app, and it's showing this is the number of points I'm supposed to have. And it was like 59 or 60. I go on there and eat a normal week, or like a normal day mm -hmm. of 59, 60. And it's like, yeah, I'm getting like a, over two and a half times as much. Okay. Drinking four to five Cokes myself a day or pops, I guess. 
and it's eating, munching. I mean, when I probably wasn't playing or doing anything, I was eating. Mm-hmm. And then I, and then I'd probably have a couple, couple cans of Dr. Pepper on my desk, you know, between, you know, playing sessions and such. So, so I'm just like, okay, where can I, I'm going to try the portion sizes things, you know, kind of reduce. And those first few weeks of it were, oh my gosh, they were rough Okay. trying to cut down. And then it's just, I'm still over half. I'm like, wow, what if I just cut down, cut down on the sodas and pops? Well, hmm and and try water i do not like oh i will be the first to admit i think ohio water has been disgusting being from texas okay. Okay. so so i needed some sort of flavoring in the caffeine so we decided to try crystal light and mix it in with our with our water instead okay. of like 10 points per per soda it's now like 0.3 okay. and that does count as water and i'm drinking a lot more water now in fact i've not had a uh, had a pop, Coke, soda, whatever you want to call it, wherever you're watching this. I've not had one in 2020, per se, but I think it's been since around November of 2019. Wow. Okay. So that's, that's probably been the biggest change. And then, and then just, you know, dieting. And then, you know, and then once I got over those first couple of leaps, I remember I've tried the dieting a little bit, tried the mm. calorie counting. I've tried exercising in the past. I'll probably get into that more in a little bit and I just could not break that you know I was always in a certain weight range like between 265 and 280 for a lot of my life Mm -hmm. and it was when I got past that 260 and then suddenly it just started going down okay so a lot of this was during the winter time I don't want to get outside and exercise during the winter in Ohio so it started to get nice and I started going walking just we live right off of right outside of downtown Circleville, Ohio, and it's a very nice downtown to walk. And I remember driving a few miles away. There's a nice little walking path. I said, "I'm going to go check this out." It closes at dark, so mm-hmm. when I get home, and it was this was literally right before all the COVID um, shelter in place stuff uh, started. I walk mm-hmm. around and I go to like the pavilion to find out more about the park, how long the walking track is, and it was talking about a 5K. I'm looking at myself, I'm like, okay, I'm down around 50 pounds. I've tried the 5K stuff twice, mm-hmm. once in 2011. It was, I remember it was seven degrees outside and I was running with two best friends, uh, Alan Wiseman and Dorian Mohar. And and I think we did it like a week and then we all got busy or we didn't wake up in the morning. And and then that was, that was the end of that. Then when I was at OSU, Mm-hmm. We had these the state of the art like world class uh, workout facilities. Mm-hmm. I said, while I'm there, you know, I'm spending all day on campus anyways. I might as well try these. I'm paying for it. Right. Nice, a nice little running track there. And I think I gave it too much, or you know, got busy with you know recitals and that those busy parts of the semester. And you know, go at it, get hurt a little bit, get a little sore, don't go back the next day, and then just ruin the routine as it gets busy. Right. So kind of uh, tried it a couple of times and get given up. So I see this 5K thing again. I look, I've lost all this weight. I I feel the need, the weight loss kind of, kind of like, I feel the need to be active with this. Mm-hmm. I, want to, I want to do something. So let's just, I'm going to try this Couch to 5K app again and, and just see where it goes. Okay. And... Uh, and I and uh, I kind of did it, you know, under the radar for a few weeks, and then I started posting on posting online about it, saying I never made it past the. Some, if you guys know the app, it goes on there. You're running like eight minutes, and then I think you have like a ten minute, and then suddenly, you know, it's ten minute with walking, and then suddenly you run twenty minutes straight. I'm okay. I'm not going to be able to do that. Then people are like just try it, take it slow do it and that and overcoming that barrier i mean this mm-hmm. is probably like march april so and i was able to overcome that and i've been i've been noticing probably the biggest difference in everything with all the diet and weight loss and playing since since i've really started all the diet stuff it's kind of all fallen into place okay. kind of to get to the brass playing the whole weight loss thing i mean we've I think as brass players, especially as a tuba player, we're using our body more so than uh, than a lot of other instruments. When we play, mm-hmm. we're having to, you know, just not hold a you know twenty five to thirty pound instrument in our lap, which is 
bad on the back, bad on the body. We're having to right. use our lungs, use, use everything in it. And, and it's just made me kind of realize through all of this, how bad I have been to my body with all the, all the stuff I've been putting in there, not exercising. And it's so easy to get in that, again, that stereotypical tuba player mm-hmm. and being the overweight big guy in the back, like I was in seventh grade, probably why I wanted to switch to it in the first place. And, and I guess, and how it's changed my playing. I don't want to, and I, I've had already a few people ask me with the weight loss, how do you feel? Are you able to use more air and all that? And I, I will still say that I will go by the whole thing that I don't believe in the whole more air thing. It's, Mm -hmm. I don't believe my vital capacity is going to increase, but the efficiency of it has definitely increased. I am I mean, when you're having to breathe in was, I try to teach, you know, honestly, not to really think about air so much. It should be, as Emory Remington put it, more of a conversational breath, more of a just like a relaxation, a relaxed feel with it. And I'm definitely able to feel that more instead of like all this additional weight and fat around my chest and and just the breathing. It's so hard, you know, it's, it's just so different being able to relax. I have a big, uh, I have my best friend had a focal dystonia and he's been all talking about the number one thing that he, he's fully, basically fully recovered from it through mm-hmm. the teachings of um, a legend, the brass pedagogy world, Jean, uh, Jean Cagris. And uh, he said, it's all about just the relaxed air being, you know, kind of the things that Remington himself were, was talking about the conversational breaths. In a way, I don't want to kind of, you know, I've not had a lesson with her, so I don't know, I don't want to say her teaching wrong or anything. But the other part of it, I think, has really helped is the whole mindset part of everything with the weight loss. I can say after starting running, it feels good when you complete that run. Yeah. But, yeah. And it was ITEC, uh, International Tuba Euphonium Association Conference in 2010. Um, I, w- I met with Jim Self at a Yamaha lunch, and my professor at the time, Tim Olt, said, I want you to at least try consider auditioning for Jim Self, who's, if you don't know who he is, he's a big Hollywood movie star, if you've seen, in terms of tuba playing, if you've mm-hmm. seen uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, he's the voice of the mothership. If you've seen Home Alone, all those nice tuba solos in there, that's yeah. him. If you've watched uh, the newest Star Wars movies... I'm pretty sure he was one of the tuba players in that recording. So he is the guy in the L.A. tuba world. And yeah. he, men- he mentioned to me, he's like, he basically mentions, he's like, have you thought about losing weight and getting into exercising? And this is back in 2010. I'm like, not really. That's never interested me. He's like, you know, losing weight has had, you know, keeping healthy, keeping all that has helped my mental state, my positivity. And whenever I'm starting to feel down a little bit, I I realize I've gained weight or I'm not eating as well. And well, changing that, you know, changes my life around. And since I started to doing this, I'm, I've had some rough experiences just, you know, in that whole mental state thing. Okay. And, and that's kind of been like a, during all this exercise and weight loss, what has been most memorable for me out of all honesty is that that luncheon with him. I never played, I didn't play for him at that time. And I ended up not auditioning for him because I couldn't make a trip out to LA with all my other auditions and everything. But, you know, I think sometimes as a teacher, you know, teaching or saying something like that will stick with someone. And I try, and, and that's kind of like, I try to be active on social media and I'm posting all my runs, all my, a lot of my weight loss stuff, just because, I've noticed since I posted, I, several of my friends who's never done it have, that are tuba players, low brass players are saying, I want to run. I want get to get exercising, losing weight. Yeah, yeah. And, and just with the whole going back to the mental state thing is I took a lesson with the, you know, the brass pedagogue Roger Rocco in 2015 in Chicago. He was uh, basically um, the longest studying student of Arnold Jacobs. He has a big sign on his wall saying, there's no reason for your success or failure other than your state of mind. And I make all my students see that. And that whole mindset goes into playing a ton. And the older I get, the better my mindset, you know, the more I do this, the better my mindset is, the better my playing becomes. Mm-hmm. And exercising and weight loss is, has been huge in just transforming and changing that mindset. Okay. And, 
I and back to something I learned like in middle school, there's the triangle of health. In each corner, right. you have the physical, emotional, and uh, social. Right. I think when we get the play, like when, whenever I was playing with Nasty Natty, I'm getting a lot of the social influences and such. It's nice being in that social setting. Yeah. But and then that helps the emotional. But when the physical's kind of collapsed, it you know you can only go so far. Right, and I right. I could feel myself just hitting a lot of barriers in my own playing, in my t- even in my teaching. And then when I finally increase that physical, it's like oh, the playing's getting better, the emotional's getting better, the social's kind of been a little on the flat side because okay. of all the COVID and all this stuff going on. But right. you know, I'm I'm feeling probably more connected than ever. Posting a run, posting weight loss, I'm getting every every like every comment. You're doing great, and then likewise, me going on. On the other stuff, um, other people saying it's like, I know you can do it. This is awesome. In fact, my best friend who I mentioned that uh, had the focal dystonia texted me the day. He's like, you've encouraged me to go to start a running thing. I'm like, wow. you know, that kind of stuff <laughs> is just, you know, it's like everything's starting to fall into place. And and I guess the, I guess the, kind of the final thing, the final thought on how it's affecting my playing is just looking at pictures of myself. Looking yeah. at myself and the little, and in, in the Zoom Zoom lessons and such I'm doing, I uh, I was one guy on the East Coast. I've actually never met him, and he's like, "Is that you?" I'm like, "He's only seen pictures." And then I look back at pictures, like right when I was done with my doctorate, sitting there at my computer, pulling ten pop cans, and then you know all the bad eating, just doing my dissertation. Okay. I'm sure as you as you remember those few months. I remember those days. Yeah. <laughs> stressed. And then looking at the pictures right after that on the trips, a couple of trips we took, I'm like, oh my gosh, I was so big. Yeah. And and I, I remember those were probably some of the hardest times in my playing and just everything. When I'm so it's just been a life changer and and you know, with the whole brass playing and exercise and running Last week, I had just finished one of my 5K runs, and I'm like, I should probably, you know, probably shower and get the playing. I'm still catching my breath because I have, this is, again, something pretty new. And mm. I'm just playing. I'm like, wow, this is so easy. This is feels so right. good getting to play after that run. Yeah. But I don't want to get be addicted to that where, you know, if like I'm on a tour where I can't exercise. But it just, you know, you have all the adrenaline, all those, you know, all that rushing through your through your veins on and everything just helping you out it sure does help the playing and that was something i was probably scared of last time i did this when i stopped i was like oh well i'm not gonna be able to do this on a recital day or a playing day just because it's gonna mess me up i may not do that now on there but you know, keeping keeping that routine has just been helpful and mm-hmm. And I guess I want to, if you have, do you want me to talk about my like running routine and everything? Yeah, actually, um, g- give me one second. Actually, I'm going to pause. I'm actually going to open up my window <laughs> or my uh, blinds. Uh, I just didn't want to do that while you were talking because um, I didn't want that loud sound in there. Yeah. Um, I, re- I just realized my lighting is really bad, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but don't worry about that. We can keep going. I'll just adjust it for the next one I do. Um, so I'm going to cut that little section out and then come back into it. Um, so, yeah, actually, you've already covered, like, a whole bunch of what I wanted to get into. So if you want to go ahead and talk about your routine and, and get into the details, that's great. Okay. Well, with my with the routine I've been doing is the, the Couch to 5K app, I use the free one because I don't normally – pay for apps as okay. something i'm kind of you know like just in case i don't like something i've already spent you know five four or five dollars off by the pro memberships forty dollars so the free stuff works pretty well and it has you do it you know three days a week um and uh, i really started this when all the lockdown stuff started i don't have to drive up to ada or columbus or all my conferences got canceled right. that so I was like, wow, you have all this extra time now. And I saw that, as I mentioned before, that 5K ad, that 5K ad. I'm like, okay, well, let's try this. And uh, I am said, well, Thursday is definitely going to be a day since that's normally one of my teaching days. I don't have to spend all that time in my car. Again, okay. kind of, as I mentioned, my studio is kind of down because they like the in-person lessons I'm waiting for. 
you know, the stores to kind of let in-person lessons happen. Who knows when that's going to going to occur, but I have this extra time and it's showing it. I only have to give it 30 minutes, run a minute, walk a minute and a half. I can do this. Okay. And then suddenly it was then, you know, the run 20 minutes. I'm like Thursdays. I don't have, you know, I have a lot more free time now. Get going, you know, right after, you know, my lesson break that I would have between O and U and then my music and art students. Mm-hmm. That I'm just like, I don't have to do any driving in between that now. So there's my running time. Right. So do that. And then Saturday is nothing. And then Monday is when I get home. Yes. Okay. Let's Let's do that. And then. So I, I did two weeks. It was, you know, a couple were a little chillier because Ohio in March and April and right. this year, May. Right. You know, it was May and it was like 32 outside. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. And yeah. then there was one day it was raining pretty hard. And I post online, I'm like, how am I supposed to run in this? And then one of my students from my time at OSU posted that when he was in high school, that his coach would make them run unless it was lightning or ice. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, well, I'm going to. I want to stick to this, so let's let's go running. Let's go running. Yeah. And the only day I've actually – so three times a week is how I started. Okay. The only time I missed was a couple weeks ago. There's tornadoes around, and my wife said, I'm sticking my foot down. You're not going running today. It was a Monday. Yeah. I said, I'm running Tuesday. Yeah. And one of my friends told me about this run streak thing, which I, between Memorial Day and 4th of July, you're supposed to run every day at least a mile. And I'm like, yeah. well, I do need to get my times up. My times have been really, you know, low. I'm mm-hmm. like, this. I'm running a mile. I can give it my all, you know, my all out, which is what was probably causing my issues before and getting injured. And when I was, you know, doing it at OSU on the, on the RPAC track. Mm-hmm was you know probably giving it my all out i can't do that you can't run you know a 500 meter dash given your you know you know you're all out on a marathon so and i really think this time since the last time i tried this the it's kind of gone along with my playing i've kind of learned to pace myself better with my playing you know consistency with playing and i've made a thing where i'm gonna unless i'm on vacation I'm going to try to at least do a little bit of playing every night. And if I miss a night, it's not the end of the world. So, right. and then just make up for it the next night. And that's, that's helped a ton. Uh, yeah. That's just like, and I even added something on. I, I, having a C and an F tuba, I love, I focus on a lot of solo and chamber reps. So I'm always on my smaller horn. I'm like, well, I'm going to do a whole daily routine thing. I was watching one of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Aaron Tyndall, um, mm-hmm. University of Miami and uh, Sarasota Orchestra, talk about warm-ups. And uh, they had the importance of just having a daily routine that you do. Mm-hmm. And I started that I mean, probably late December on both horns, like a little cross-training thing. So I'm okay. playing both horns okay. every day because I know for some of the nasty natty gigs, I'd be – I was suddenly on my small horn and like, Hey James, I need you to play. I'm like, Oh, uh, big horn stuff. Okay. Yeah. So this has really just helped that. And it's the same thing with running. Sorry about that. It was just the same thing with the whole running thing, you know, like, okay, I know how to pace myself. I know how to practice better. I know how to mm-hmm. control my practice. And, and I said, if the 20 minute run doesn't work, I'm going to do it slower you know, take a passage slower when I'm playing. I'm going to just, you know, run for 10, 12, two 12s and like, you know, like kind of take two sections and then work, work that, that in a piece, like that one middle section that always tends to kind of plague us that, that right. we kind of look over, kind of add a little bit on from the beginning. So kind of using what I've learned as a musician in practicing and what I teach more and then applying that to running and just being open to advice and, you know, this run streak, even though this is like the first week I've I've really started doing it, has just, it feels good. I'm, I mean, I know the importance of off days in, in running because it is a physical activity, but just that whole, I'm going to do it if it's cold, I'm going to do it if it's raining. And then once, and then I think the springtime, or if you're watching this right now, getting getting into it now when it's starting to get a little warmer, just getting that routine going. So yeah. when it gets dark earlier, then you can like, if hopefully you stick with it and then buy running gear run at night or buy a gym membership run on a treadmill or something and that's and that's something i personally have been liking about running because 
I guess you could do Planet Fitness, but then the gyms were closed during during the shutdown. Right. So I've never done that. And that and so many people buy gym memberships at the beginning of the year thinking they're going to be active and they don't stick with it. They yeah. they have a week off or they have a vacation and after that they never get back going. Mm-hmm. So it's just like the O C D, this is part of my routine. Right. And as we got as I noticed as I gotten out of school and gotten older, having that routine and, you know, it's like we're set in our routines, but it really does help get things done and it helps. Yeah. And then we can change that and add to it because once we get in that routine, I feel like we crave more and we want to do more. Right. So, you know, whether you're a brass player, just watching this for any brass playing things, or if you're wanting to also get in the running, getting in that routine and it is so helpful. And then, and then when you're having to pay for something like a gym membership or mm-hmm. or whatever, it, it it gets expensive and and then when you're starting to do something, when you're wanting wanting to keep doing it, then you're like, okay, I'm gonna make that that you know extra money, the money I was spending on Dr Pepper each week, or my right. my wife uh, drinking as much Mountain Dew as she did. Like, right. well, maybe we could put that extra money that we're saving, you know, towards a gym membership. Okay. And in the winter months until it gets, you know, warmer again or light outside more. Yeah. Well, and one thing I've been realizing um, with us during the, um, you know, during this pandemic is that we're not spending the, as much money as we were before because we're both, we've been working from home. So that gas money, you know, or, um, or just fast food or whatever, it's just the convenience things or whatever. Um, I'm looking at the bank. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is kind of nice that we're not spending, you know, all this and that. So I, I can definitely relate, relate to that mm-hmm. with you. Um, um, yeah, man, you, you you basically gone through everything I want to talk about. And this is great. <laughs> One of the things that really stands out for me of what you're saying is is the pacing, uh, and then you know, and just having the right mindset. Um, yeah, I mean, wow. Oh, um, I mean, you kind of yeah, you did a lot. <laughs> So I guess, uh, I guess the next step is just to have you back on here, um, you know, sometime. Uh, but do you want to go ahead and uh, play something for us? Um, yes. I have actually uh, prepared a piece that I commissioned by Ben McMillan called Tomes of Redemption. Okay. Uh, assuming schools and such get started back in the fall, I'm going to be doing a kind of like from darkness to redemption type thing on my fall recital tour. It's a piece with electronics. And I'm actually... I'm actually, um, there's a piece on there I kind of made about weight loss called cheese spread in the darkness section. So I'll be doing that. And then, you know, this piece is uh, actually, um, it's, it will sound like movie music. I'm playing part of the first movement. And and Ben McMillan uh, wrote it for me. I said, I have some, I've had some, you know, issues, some mindset issues. And this is like my, I want to slay a dragon at the end because in the first two uh, sequel, the first two installments of it, the Tomes of Hardened Steel and the uh, Tomes of the Wanderer, you have the, the hero to fight a big villain. And the hero in this one has become old. He became king, old, and he let his kingdom kind of go to shame, go, you know, defecate. And I relate that to my body. And okay. then, and then to do one last thing, he has to get back in his old age and finds out he has to slay a dragon. So, wow. in his okay. old age. So, this is a very fitting for this. So, I, this is uh, part of the first movement of Ben McMillan's Tomes of redemption.
I love hearing that piece. And uh, when we were doing our sound check yesterday, I just, that's the first time I've ever heard it. And um, I actually kind of want to go out and find a, you know, buy a copy of it and, and, uh, and look at it and learn it myself. So, um, yeah. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah. I think, I think you've really covered everything. Um, you know, so thank you again for being on this, um, for being the second interview. Uh, and basically, you know, for bodybuilding for brass players, what I really want to do is just bridge these gaps between what we do as musicians and, you know, in health and in, in our lives and everything in balance. So you've covered a whole lot and helped to do that. So I really appreciate you. So did you have anything else you wanted to say to our audience before you leave? If you're unsure about exercising, do it. Do it. it does help. And you get one body and, yeah. and I encourage anyone to kind of look at, uh, uh, older brass musicians that have retired you mm -hmm. look at you look at uh, I'll say for a tuba example I don't know how much they exercise but just look at the health Dan Parentoni is a professor at Indiana University is in his seventies mm -hmm. and he's still teaching yeah and you look at some of these guys that are still teaching and playing even after they retire from their main jobs and they look like they're in good health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then some of the guys that haven't always been I don't, I can't name. You know, they may still be active in teaching, but the people who are still playing, I've always noticed, are the ones in the best, best of health and condition. So yeah. you got to look out for yourself, just not from when you're in your 20s, 30s, or 40s, but, you know, 50s, 60s, 80s. It, it all goes a long way, and it's never too – and in my case, I started this in 2011 and failed. Yeah. If you fail, keep trying, yeah. and you're never too old to get started. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks. Um, yeah. Thanks again. And um, I guess that's it for now. So uh, thank you all for watching this video. Um, and uh, until next time, thanks for checking out Bodybuilding for Brass Players. Peace.